The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. Are we going to say good morning, Tommy? We got to say good morning, everybody. You tell them. This is Tommy O'Brien. This is Tom O'Brien coming to you live from TFNM. We kick things off on Monday morning, 9 o'clock in the morning. Appreciate you bearing with us this morning. Man, we've been battling like a flu or RSV or something in this house. No, no banging, please. I know, buddy. We're struggling. I know. It's been a couple weeks of the flu. The babysitter grandma's now sick. Um, so we're struggling. We're making it through. You want your cars, Tommy? There's your cars. See? Yeah. You got it? But I wanted to do the program because, boy, we got a market out here, folks. Let's just jump right into the charts, okay? We kick things off. S&Ps, we're trading right now, negative by 15 points, trading at 44.15. Boy, you talk about an acceleration I get that one. on Friday. I get that one. Which one? Did you want to watch us? You can't lean on there. You're leaning on the keys. Did you want to watch us, TFNN? Which one? Oh. Which one? That one? That one. That's us? No. Yeah. Oh, who's that? No. That's you. Do you see it? Oh, please don't bang that, please. Okay. It's my fault. No banging, please. It's okay. my fault. Hey, no banging, please. Okay. It's my fault. There we go, softer. What do you want? Bang what do you want to watch? Fault. What do you want to watch? I know, buddy. We're gonna see what we can do today, folks. We may not make it the whole hour. Um, we had to jam this together at the last second. Uh, but let's get into the markets, man. Do you see the markets? Tell me, what do you want to look at? You know what I got? Do you want to show them what we got yesterday? Show them. What did we get? We got this. Yeah, we got that. You want to show them? Oh, we all remember these, folks, the classic. Oh, he's got dinosaurs in there. He's got animals, huh? What's in there? What were you looking at? That might keep him busy for a few minutes. Okay, let's take a look at these markets, man, because, boy, you talk about an acceleration on Friday. We get a slight pullback. On Wednesday, on Thursday, and boy, the market takes off like it hadn't seen anything, man. Now, what was so interesting about this market is I you got a one-two punch from elephants. elephants, folks. You got a one-two punch from the market on Thursday in a bad bond sale and then Chairman Powell's words at 2 o'clock. Well, it turns out that the bad bond sale got a little bit of cover from the fact that it could have been impacted by the hack of that Chinese bank. And then the chairman's words at 2 o'clock shouldn't... you can try. That's okay. I'm going to talk to them about the charts. Can you try? Oh, what are we looking at? Oh, a monkey. Tell him. A monkey. I know, huh, buddy? Huh? What are you looking at? What's in there now? The remarkable thing is this market figured out by Friday that the bond sale. I know, buddy. I know. We're doing our best, huh? It's a rhinoceros. It's a rhinoceros. Tell them. Tell everybody it's a rhinoceros. Do you remember these? It's amazing simple toys, right? We're walking around Target. He wants a couple toys. We usually get out of there without buying toys. If we bought a toy every time we're in there, man, I'd be broke. Uh, you try it. Okay, thank you. We'll try it. And it's amazing how they're just cla Oh, what's what was that? Is that? I see it. Is it a hippo? What are you doing? Is it a hippo? What is it? Oh, it is a hippo, isn't it? Uh, we're, we're trying, folks. I appreciate you tuning in, jumping in as we got Tommy in here. It's always an adventure. But like I said, I did want to do the program, and we'll see if he lets us talk a little markets. Huh? Should we talk yields? Tommy, let's take a look at the tenure. Now, I had to pull up the tenure, folks, because what's happening? We've been talking about this morning. I wanted to do the program. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, what do we got? Tommy, tell the tenure's breaking back into the channel, maybe. Is it going to break back into the channel, or is it going to test? Is it going to break back in? Up here. Is it going to break back in, or is it going to test? What do you think? What about that one? Oh, you got your mouse? Hold on, let's pull up yours. Where is it? There it is. Now, we had quite a break over Friday's action. What is interesting that I'm still digesting here 
is that, boy, this market took off on Friday, even as we had higher yields, right? And now what have we done? We've come back within the channel line. So keep your eyes on this channel line. Man, we're only a couple ticks away from that area right now. But you start breaking into the lower boundary, okay? And you're talking about we might... Us and That's us, Tommy. I know. You see us? You saying hi to everybody? I know. And... Even with okay. yields okay. rising a bit, we had the market accelerating to highs. We had the best day in the NASDAQ we've had in months. So it's a critical area here, but we are right at that critical area. We've been talking about the upper boundary line on the channel line sitting at 107.03 right now on that 10-year. We jump around to the markets. We got the NASDAQ off by 65 points. It's going to be a critical week in the markets for inflation data. Now, if you follow candlesticks, folks. That's a bullish engulfing, I believe, okay? I mean, this thing just engulfs the last candles that we've had. It blows apart the recent highs. You hit a high in the S&P of 44.35. That gets above the highs that we had back in October, which was 44.30. And those highs back here are correlating to what? About a million shares? I want that one. 1. 1.2. And what do we do on Friday? About 9.16. Oh, you got the cars? It's oh. McQueen and Doc Hudson. It's McQueen and Doc Hudson. I know, Tommy. Let me take off some of these Fibonacci lines for a little bit of clarity here. But, yeah, it's a strong bar on Friday, man. And it's especially strong in light of the fact that we had rising yields when it was happening. That's the one that I'm trying to wrap my brain around originally uh, right now in terms of how is the market crushing higher even at a time. forgive me even at a time when the market is pushing higher yield we got the 10-year right now sitting at almost 4.7 percent right now um yeah interesting one to say the less right to say the least all right let's jump around to some of the equities as we come into the first break right now you jump over to boeing shares boeing they're going to get a nice lift up about eight dollars in the pre-market to 205 as they got Emirates Airlines selling 95 Boeing aircraft for $52 billion. That's quite a sales job, right? $52 billion, man, for 95 planes, Emirates. You know, I watch Bloomberg a lot, and I always see those Emirates ads, and it is remarkable. Uh, who's the actress, the beautiful actress in there? Selma Hyatt? No, not Selma Hyatt. Um, I'll think of her name. She's taking showers in the air, right? She's taking showers. She's got like a suite. It's always interesting. I'm like Emirates, man. They're 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 pushing to the uh, affluent individual coming, via Bloomberg baby. when you're the talking about flying. Coming. Oh, what are you doing? The, I'm racing. The ghosts are coming. They're racing. Hey, Tommy, did you tell everybody? Is Halloween over? Tell him. The ghosts are coming for us. Are the ghosts coming? He was a big Halloween fan. We're moving on to Christmas, though. Uh, so Boeing, going to catch a little bit of a lift in the pre-market. We jumped to some other equities with some action in the pre-market. Let's see. Yeah, TripAdvisor's a little bit higher. They got a upgrade, right? Yeah, barely. You're up by 35 pennies right now. What else we got? Not a ton of action pre-market to kick off Mondays, but the main event, folks, is probably going to be tomorrow when we get CPI data out tomorrow. Be interesting to see where this market goes ahead of that. You want to do a light in McQueen? Okay, we got to go to break. Can we tell Tell them we're going to be right back, okay, Tommy? So, he's, flying. he's flying. Folks, stay tuned. We got a lot to talk about. We'll be back in three minutes. Don't go away. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the market in negative territory, and you had a little bit of a drop off right at 8:30. There, as we're about 10 points below that number right now, trading at 44.15. The Nasdaq 100 negative by about 64. That's about four tenths percent. And you know what's pretty awesome here, folks, on a Fibonacci basis? The one to 1 1.618. My dad talks about it often. That's usually a full expansion. You might get the look at the tick. Look at the tick how it made it towards the end of the day. If you were looking for an expansion area and you were long on Friday, man and you plowed above the highs that we got on Thursday, the next stop was 15,605. And we got to 15,612 after market. You actually ended the market at a price point of 15,604.50. Look at that. That is the four o'clock bar. No, that's the four o'clock bar that closed. Yeah, we'll put it on the 345 bar, closed at 15,597. The bar at 415 closed almost to the tick at that expansion. Now, what's remarkable here is Let's clear that one out for a moment. And let's go into, and this is the NQ we're dealing with here. And a 3A2 brings you even 80 points below where we're at right now. Oh, it's right here, buddy. Oh, where'd it go? There it is. There it is. Oh, wait, let the ad go. There you go, pal. So nonetheless, a pretty mammoth move. And if you're talking Fibonacci's, man, we're nowhere near a possible retracement. So get ready for the opening bell, man. We may see some fireworks, to say the least. Let's jump around to some commodities. Crude with a 77 handle. We make it to a 74.91 price point last week. We're chopping around at 77.21 this morning. Gold, quite the struggle for gold last week. Gold flat this morning, trading at 19.38. You jump over to notes and bonds. And we got lower price and higher yield continuing. And as I talked about, man, we're breaking through that channel line right now at 107.03. And boy, you talk about blowing everybody's minds, right? If somehow yields continue to rise. And, you know, don't think you know more than this market, folks, because the 10-year just gave up a full point and a half in almost two or three trading days. You know, you encapsulate the weekend there. You put this thing on the daily. And... We're only a point and a half away from the lows out here. And we just traded a point and a half off of the highs that we had only a few days ago. So we're going to see where we go from there, man. Remarkable. All right. 
Speaking of rates, let's jump to the first article I wanted to touch on, man. Who are you going to pick, Goldman or Morgan Stanley? They are diverging on Fed rate cut forecast, but boy, they got some big cuts across the board, even on the lower echelon with Goldman. Forecast rates to fall by 1.75 percentage points. Morgan Stanley sees 300 basis points of rate reductions out there, man. You talk about a divergence, right? Morgan Stanley forecast the Fed to make deep interest rate cuts over the next two years as inflation cools, while Goldman analysts expect fewer reductions and a later start. It would make sense if you're looking for fewer reductions, you might see a later start to encapsulate. The central bank will start cutting rates in June 2024, then again in September, and every meeting from the fourth quarter onward, each in 25 basis, po basis points increments. Morgan Stanley researchers, led by chief U.S. economists, said in their 2024 outlook on Sunday, That'll take the policy rate down to 2.375% by the end of 2025. No, I want that one. You don't want that one? Let's see which one you want. Which one you want? You want the McQueen? Oh, there he is. There You're talking is. about 300 basis points over two years. And what is remarkable here is that June 2024 is like tomorrow for all intents and purposes in the market, man. The market gets ahead of things by three or six months. June is barely six months on the outlook. So be careful there, man. Goldman Sachs, meanwhile, okay, is looking for the first cut in the fourth quarter of 2024, followed by one cut per quarter through mid-2026, a total of 175 basis points. That's bringing the number 3.5 to 3.75 by the mid-2026. I mean, just a huge divergence in what's happening with yields. Nobody knows when you go out. 2026, we're still in 2023, folks. Yeah. Now, the Goldman forecasts are close to the central banks. The Fed's projection from September showed two quarter point cuts penciled in for next year and the policy rate ending 2025 at 3.9%, according to median estimates. Now, what I have been talking about here is, is that as the economy cools down, okay, and this is where I'm struggling, is, is the Fed going to be able to wait until the fourth quarter of 2024 to cut when they've already said that where they are right now is restrictive, and if inflation keeps coming down, their policy rate is actually gonna be more restrictive, so they'll have to cut to just stay in the same level of restrictive policy rate that they have. That's gonna be the big question, and that's what the market's trying to figure out. Morgan Stanley's team sees a weaker economy, and that would be the, that would be the thing that does it, man, that warrants a ma greater magnitude of easing, though no recession. I mean, quite a Goldilocks scenario, right, where you have them cutting 300 basis points beginning in six months and go in every single meeting almost for a year and a half. And they're saying that there won't be a recession. Well, there's got to be something, man, if they're cutting like that with inflation where it is. They expect unemployment to peak at 4.3%. The Fed's estimate is 4.1%. And there are the numbers to take a look at in terms of Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, and the Fed. And this is talking about 2025 forecasts. 2025, I mean, it's so far going out to that level. But nonetheless, you know, you think you have their everything figured out. You got two of the biggest Wall Street banks out there, Goldman and Morgan Stanley, that are miles apart, basically, on where they think the Fed will be by the end of next year and into 2025, even, on that level. Yeah, pretty remarkable. Although they both, uh, everybody thinks we avoid a downturn. I mean, how does that happen, right? How are you so far off on where the Fed's going to be? And meanwhile, everybody thinks the economy is going to be fine. There's a lot to, um, there's a lot up in the air that we do not know in terms of how this plays out, folks. We'll leave it at that. All right, let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks, see how they're trading this morning. We jump to Apple shares. Apple. Barely in the red with a negative market. Apple shares this morning off about 80, centi 80 pennies. You jump over to Microsoft shares. Microsoft down just over a dollar at 368.50 right now. We jump over to Tesla shares. Tesla catching a lift up to 216 from 214.65. We jump over to NVIDIA. NVIDIA, just so strong, man. Uh, even on a negative market, you have NVIDIA shares up about a buck fifty, trading at 485 this morning. We jump over to Google shares. Yeah, barely in the red this morning. We'll jump over to Meta, see how they're doing this morning. Meta, quite the acceleration last week. Up to 329, you're backing off to 326 right now. Let's check back in on yields as we're chopping around right at that channel line at 107.04. We jump back to crude. 
Crude sitting at 7723. And we jump over to the dollar index, man. Dollar got a 106 handle on Friday. We're pushing 106 yet again. 105.90, we'll call it, on the dollar index this morning. Yeah, so CPI out tomorrow, man. That's going to be an interesting one ahead of the CPI data. What are you playing, buddy? What are you playing? You know what he's watching, folks? He's watching YouTube. He's watching Google. Yeah. Always. Uh, consumer spending fell in October. That is a just a CNBC, NRF, retail monitor tracking card transactions. Retail sales, excluding autos and gas, fell by 0.08%. Basically flat. Okay, 0.08%. It's a joint product of CNBC and the National Retail Federation based on $9 billion annual credit and debit card transactions. Um, so pretty much flat there and ahead of the all-important CPI numbers tomorrow. All right, folks, stay tuned. We're coming back for the market open. We'll be back in three minutes. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. You want some bread, Tommy? Welcome back, folks. We got a mix of Disney and Google here. I don't know where McQueen is, buddy. He's just on the... He's right there. He's right there. Oh, you got him? There he is. Okay. 
We got markets open and you got an S&P negative by 13 points right now. NASDAQ 100, you're off by 66. The Dow off by 39 right now. All the markets catch a slight lift. You get the Russell off by eight this morning. Uh, jumping around, interesting article over here at Bloomberg talking about the yields and how they affect everything, right? And it would make sense that retirees might be a little bit more comfortable when the risk-free rate of return is in such an elevated position. And simultaneously, we have inflation that might be weakening a bit because the risk-free rate of return is pointless if you got inflation raging above that point. But that doesn't seem the case to be the case anymore. So higher bond yields mean retirees can pull a bit more from savings. And it's interesting how they get into some of the math here. If you're unfamiliar with how it works, folks, the general benchmark of a retirement account is that it's fairly safe that you can withdraw about three to four percent of your portfolio on a yearly basis we couldn't find Danico oh. we couldn't find him remember I don't know where he is oh McQueen's jumping so three to four percent so if you have a million dollar portfolio you can take about thirty to forty thousand dollars out each year and not risk ever running out of money, okay? Because that percentage is obviously gonna change as you take down some of that capital. Now, this uh, is out that Morningstar says that workers can now safely withdraw 4% a year. That's up slightly from 3.8%, which is where they put that number last year. The uptick comes as bond yields are higher and we are relatively sanguine about the long-term inflation, okay? That's the director of research at Morningstar, one of the author's reports. And it gives the example here, if you start it with a balance of a million dollars and you're looking for a steady stream of income akin to a yearly paycheck, that 4% rate means pulling 40,000 a year, an amount that would increase each year to account for inflation, okay? They tested real life returns and rates in a thousand possible market environments to arrive at a withdrawal rate with a 90% probability of someone having funds left over after 30 years years, which is pretty cool when you look at it in that prospect, right? The 4% is the highest safe withdrawal rate on a portfolio that holds 20 to 40% of stocks, 10% in cash, and the rest in bonds, okay? It uses that as its conservative base case and then looks at what the safe rate would be for portfolios with other asset mixes, okay? And it's pretty remarkable when you look at what the 30-year return is for what they push in terms of growth stocks, okay? I mean, look at these numbers that they're pushing out for the 2022 versus the 2023 projected 30-year return. They're mammoth differences. I mean, U.S. large growth stocks, you lost a percentage point for 30 years. 30 years, Tommy. I know you're doing so well, Tommy. We'll see. We're probably going to make it through this segment, folks, and then we may re-air um, just a portion of it. We'll see how it goes. Um, you, no, no, no. Oh, you doing McQueen? You doing McQueen? I'm dragging into him a dinosaur. Oh, the 30-year return forecast for investment-grade bonds is now 4.93%. That's this one in the blue. Up from 4.51 last year, okay? Long-term inflation rate is now 2.42, down from 2.84. That's still a 30-year projection. Okay, the Fed wants it at two. We're at 2.42. You compound 2.42 over 30 years, and boy, that 0.42 matters, okay? Um, but pretty remarkable when you look at where stocks are on the long run, right? Large growth stocks, 8.6. Large value stocks, 8.8. .8. Small growth stocks, 10.3. Small value stocks, 12.8. Small U.S. value stocks are projected over a 30-year basis to pull in almost 13%. Foreign stocks, almost 10%, down from a 10. Um, and then, of course, you have investment-grade bonds and treasury bills, and then inflation far below that. So interesting, nonetheless, how those all vary in a year. Going on 30 years, God bless you, man, if you can figure that one out. So this is all risk management. It's cool how they go over this, okay? So aside from how long a person pulls from a portfolio, their asset and their asset allocation, a third key variable is the market environment when a retiree is drawing on that money, okay? The highest safe withdrawal rate. What are you doing, buddy? I fixed it. Okay, you fixed it. Good job. 
The highest safe withdrawal rate over 30-year periods from 1926 to 1933 for a portfolio of 75% in stocks was 6.7%. In tough markets, the lowest safe rate was 2.7%. Uh, 6.7% is when things were just going bonkers. Okay, cherry picking some lows in there. 4% withdrawal is a popular guideline used as a starting point in planning how much to safely take from portfolios in the retirement. A safe percentage can be higher, but only if a retiree is willing to do things like lower the percentage withdrawals in down markets or to forego annual inflation adjustments. Now, the other part of this is, is that you can always make estimates in terms of having other assets on the side, right? Hopefully, if you have a retirement account, you have a retirement portfolio, and then you can always have other assets. Like maybe you have your house, and maybe your house is your backstop, right? Maybe in a worst case scenario, you have the equity in your house that is there if you need it, just in case you, we go through one of those periods in time that is not kind to the market over the next 20 years when you're taking money out, et cetera. So keep that in mind as well. This is only if you're living off that money, et cetera, and you never wanna go broke with it, you need that money, and if you run out of it, you have no employment, you have no cash, three to 4% is the number, but you can see how yields affect and everything. And retirees finally getting some of that benefit, but boy, they've been hurt by that inflation, man, and that is not going away, even if you get back down to 2.5%. All right, what else we got going on? Yeah, we talked about, well, we got Biden and G meeting. That'll be an interesting one. Not sure there'll be anything coming out of there as we get the markets rolling over a bit right now. s and is back to 44.11. That's actually the high that we started at Thursday. Seems like 4,400 is a number that this market likes right now. It's getting drawn towards it. You get the NASDAQ trading lower by 85 points right now. Dow off by uh, 85 as well. Crude catches a bid. Let's take our eye on yields right now. This market's been open for about seven minutes. Oh, boy. Watch out, folks. Absolutely. I did not expect it would make it through the back. I, I was really looking for a nice bounce from this channel line, man. I was. And we might get it. We're still close. You know, this channel line. On the top portion of that, you could push it a little lower. The linear regression might actually push it as low as right here. Okay, let's see where that lines up. That's lined up at about 106.27. It's an art, not a science. It's in that area, folks. And, uh, yeah, we want to see how it reacts at that area on the 10-year, sitting at 107.02. But we're continuing to talk right now, and we have yields continuing to rise with the 10-year pushing 4.69% right now. Yeah. I made it bigger, man. You made it bigger. Good job, Tommy. All right, let's jump around to other equities. And Disney had some volatility last night. We are going to come back. He's watching his shows. Oh, what happened? Are we on an ad? We're on an ad. Hold on. We got to skip this one, Tommy. Ready? One, two, three. Skip that ad. Uh, Disney, some strong numbers last week. Interesting how they do this, right? They put out the strong numbers. They let the market trade higher. Then they give you the bad news on Friday that they're scaling back the movies. And we talked about the movie Marvels out over the weekend. Yeah, $47 million. Not what they would have wanted. Stay tuned, folks. Tommy and I will be right back. Launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps off about 20 right now. We're talking Disney shares. So Disney, uh, forgive me, let me get this article up over here. So they have the movie The Marvels, which comes out over the weekend, takes in $47 million domestically. They were looking for 60 to 65. Internationally, it did do 60 plus million. So that put the number, yeah, 63 million internationally. Brings the total number to 110. But this is the lowest open, is it ever? It might be. Yeah, the lowest domestic debut for the Marvel comic okay. universe is what that is. Uh, but they're talking about the international marketplace, man. Brings it up over $100 million. Now they'll take this movie and they'll push it out through the Thanksgiving break to try and bring it to profitability, basically, is the plan there. Now... I have not been a huge Marvel comic universe fan myself, but I do know Iron Man, and I am familiar with Captain America, right? Robert Downey Jr. and his Iron Man, probably the most notable in my opinion, at least my. But they had the end game in 2019. Talk about end game, right? COVID hits in 2020. That wrapped up the storylines and arcs for the popular characters like Captain America, which is uh, played by Chris Evans, or Iron Man, played by Robert Downey Jr., and they have struggled dearly to find new storylines and find new characters, and I think that's putting it lightly. So the Marvels landed the second lowest opening day for an MCU film, securing just $21 million on Friday. That included $6 million in Thursday night previews. The only film to few, snare fewer ticket sales was The Incredible Hulk in 2008, and that was the second ever MCU film after Iron Man had become a surprise smash earlier this year. You know, whoa, he's spinning. I mean, there's something to be said about Robert Downey Jr., man, right? You just can't put anybody into these characters. He is something special and pretty remarkable. Um, it was a surprise smash earlier that year in 2008 that Iron Man came out. And we're talking about 15 years later. And guess no. what? They can't figure it out. They can't get the, the, the formula right with anybody else in there. You got Dino Queen? You got and it's funny because we're watching Dinoco, Dinoco McQueen. You know who that is, folks? That's Disney. Okay, what else we got? I just had something else pulled up. Come on, where are we? Here we go. So this one comes out Friday after the close. And it was interesting. I mean, comments in the den, right? Saying, ah, now I know why they ran this market into, uh, into the close on Friday. Because Moody's had an outlook cut coming right after the bell, literally right after the bell, folks. Um, they had that cut. Let's zoom in on Friday. Yeah, it was probably 
the chips and markets start to trade lower and they pick things up right where they left off Sunday at 6 o'clock. Now, this should not be surprising, okay? Stocks fall to start the week after Moody's cuts U.S. outlook, okay? Should not be surprising in terms of what they're saying here. We have a lot of debt. Interest rates are going up. That's creating more interest payments that the government has to, to make. At the same time, the partisan divide is even greater. It's very difficult to pass bills to fund our government. It's very difficult right now, even when one party controls a chamber for them to agree. Think about that, right? Politics is the art of compromise. I love that saying, folks, because it is. We disagree on so much, but you can't get anything done unless you compromise, okay? And today's age, compromise is not in vogue, to put it lightly, and that's why we have such a blockade on anything getting done lately. But it used to be compromise. But now the parties themselves are struggling, and Republicans are in focus right now, man, okay, in the House. Whoa, Tommy. But that says a lot, and things need to get done, and it's very difficult to imagine. I mean, we got a government shutdown going on this week, and nobody even cares because it's business as usual. That's not how things are supposed to get done, folks. And this whole deal with paying our bills, okay, we got to pay our bills. Where did Danico go? I don't know where he went. I know, the internet's have. Oh, you turned off. He put on airplane mode. That's what you do. You put on airplane mode, so you lost internet. Hold on, it's going to come back. It's coming. We all know that. You hit the airplane yeah, mode. Daddy. Is it coming back? Ready? Give it a second. Ready? We're going to tell it go. Ready? One, two, three, go. There it is. Oh, we got to do the ad. Ready? Here we go. One, two, three, go. There he goes. Uh, we got to pay our bills, man. Okay? And so this government shutdown's coming. No one agrees how. You don't want to play games anymore? Okay. What would you like to do? I want to play a queen game. The dinosaurs? Which one? No. No? Oh. What do you got? Can everyone see you? Let's make sure they can see that beautiful face. Oh, you say hi to everybody. Say happy Monday, everybody. You say happy Monday. You hide. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so Moody's on Friday underscored the U.S. very large fiscal deficits amid partisan gridlock in Washington as contributing factors for the cut. Okay, the ratings agency reaffirmed America's credit rating. This comes three months after Fitch lowered the long term foreign currency issuer default rating to double A plus to triple A, also citing expected fiscal deterioration. An increasing debt burden and political standoffs on fiscal and debt issues. Republicans are struggling to even figure out an agreement of how we keep the government open right now, let alone Democrats and Republicans coming together. But the bummer of this all is, is that it must get done in legislation going forward, folks. OK, you can't go backwards in time doesn't work. You can't say we're going to become fiscally responsible by not paying our bills that we already spent. That's the tough part I get a hold of this. And listen, everything's a negotiation, but I've always said this before, right? You come into a negotiation from a strong point or a weak point. I don't understand how both no. sides come into a negotiation. Is he getting on? Oh, he's getting in the blue one. Is Spider-Man getting in the blue one? Uh, you know, the only strength that comes from that negotiation point from the minority party is saying that we'll let the government fail. And I, I, I struggle to understand why that is a negotiating point. Things have to get done going forward. A little bit soapbox out there for what it is. But this is not how it gets done, folks. You know, I look at Tommy. He's two years old, folks. Two years old, right? In 40 years, the red one, in 40 years, he's not even going to be my age, okay? We have to make sure that things are okay for him in 40 years. And things are not going to be okay for him in 40 years unless things get done going forward. And if things get done both ways, okay, it's not just about raising taxes and it's not just about cutting. It's both, okay? It's both. We probably need to spend a little bit less money in certain areas and we probably need to tax the people who can afford it a little bit more. Yeah, I know, blasphemy to some out there, folks, okay? But that's the truth and how it gets done. Because we got generations of kids out there that are going to have to deal with this, and that's not fair at all. And this doesn't get it done going backwards. Not fair at all. Not fair at all. Tell them, Tommy. Yeah, we don't like that, huh? That's okay, but not the levels we're approaching, huh? Yeah, tell them. Tell them. Oh, you show me your excavator? You got an excavator out there? No. Yeah. 
Oh, buddy, you're being a trooper, huh? All right, folks, we got one more segment. He's a trooper. Should we watch some dinosaurs? What do you want to show him? Oh, will we watch in Super Mario, too? Will we watch some Super Mario? No. 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 He's a trooper. All right, will you say we'll be right back? Can you tell him? Say we'll be right back? Yeah. We'll be right back, everybody. Don't go away. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We're eating some bread. We're eating some Hawaiian rolls. Tommy, tell him, is that good bread? Is that good bread? Oh, he loves his Hawaiian rolls, folks. Who doesn't love some good Hawaiian rolls, right? S&P's pretty much where we kicked off the session right now. We're negative by 20 points, trading at 4410. Interesting from a technical perspective here, 4400, an area on this chart where we chopped around from Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday as well. But the 4410 area, okay, that's where we were overnight. And that's where you began the acceleration on Thursday. Pretty interesting in terms of right back to that number, man. What do you do? You trade down 50 points. You trade up almost 80 points. And then you trade back down 30 points. And you're right back to where you kick things off with the markets in negative territory. We jump over to the VIX. VIX right now trading at 15.04. And we got to talk about our man, Larry Pesavento. I was listening to Larry. He came on the program with my dad on Friday talking about the live trading webinar he's doing uh, 48 hours from right now, folks, Wednesday morning, 8 a.m. till noon. He'll be in there. 
We already got some great signups. Always a good turnout for four hours, 8 a.m. till noon Eastern time. He's going to be live trading. Uh, Larry comes on. So this is the race. The race. Larry comes on the program with my dad Friday. Says something like, I can't remember. Yeah, we got to, you know, we got some calm markets out here. Uh, some boring markets. Yeah, point being, we don't have boring markets right now, folks. We got some volatility. And Wednesday should be a great day as well because what do we get we get cpi on tuesday we get ppi on wednesday we get economic numbers coming out this week as well we get the markets in negative territory to kick things off we get a vix sitting at 15 but don't forget about larry folks check it out on the front page of tfnn if you've never attended one great time to check it out and with this you gain access to a month of his newsletter that's a 97 dollars value the cost to attend is two ninety five, so right away that takes the cost basically to under two hundred bucks. You get the newsletter for a month for free, and yeah, he's done one of these every few months or so, and we may do more of these. We'll see, but this one's coming up November fifteenth, which is Wednesday. Can't believe it, Wednesday coming at you, man. Before you know it, it's going to be Thanksgiving. It's going to be Christmas. All right, Tommy, that's it. We made it. We gonna say bye to everybody. We gotta tell them. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Stay tuned. Don't go away. Basil Chapman, he's up next at the Tiger Technician's Hour. Steve Rhodes at 11. Fast Market at 12. Larry at 1. My dad at 3. Have a great Monday, everybody.